Um, we got about 30 seconds. Hopefully we finish this run. How to farm some potions for Ultimate Death Knight because uh, I had none, basically. So we're going to back out of here, claim him, instant max him, and then make him solo some content because I have to do that, right? My channel, I have to make him try to solo something, of course. What do we got? Where's, where's our daily reset? Oh, I didn't even finish my dailies. Oh, no. I haven't even started my dailies. And they're about to end in 10 seconds. About. Sweet. Very, very cool. Two seconds. World, yeah, world first. Ultimate Death Knight. It has to be, right? Here we go. Let's see it. Claimed him for CVC points. Come on. Clay. Go, 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 go. He's here. It, it's broke. I can't have world first now. I'm getting scammed. Okay. Instant was a brute. Is this a... Yeah, I don't have no feasts. Oh, I guess feasts are in the food. Dang it. There's my feast. All right. Dang, there you go, DK. I was going to give you a feast, but I, I didn't know where it was. All that CVC points. We're going to get some more. Oh, my gosh. I better not have... I better have enough potions. Do I not? Oh, my gosh. No, I don't. What game am I playing? Are you kidding me? No, no, no. I do have enough potions. I prepared for this. I prepared for this. Easy. All right, there we go. Wait, no, wait. I don't have enough potions. I'm ruined. I'm literally ruined. Instant max and ultimate death knight? Don't even have enough brews. Two arcane brews. Gosh dang it. Not even the world first ultimate death knight. So guys, Ultimate Death Knight. I've just now spent about two hours on stream testing this guy out. And I want to go over kind of what I've learned, maybe some suggestions. And if you guys want to build him during CVC, I want to get this video out there as soon as possible so you guys can go ahead and do so. I don't want to post the whole two-hour stream because that would be pretty boring. So Ultimate Death Knight has a few very interesting things in his kit. I'm going to go over it real quickly. First off, A1 Provoke, single target, the A2, AoE decrease attack, which is absolutely amazing, okay? All of these abilities... Are going to be significantly better if you go ahead and book this champion so booking him is definitely going to be pretty significant i mean cooldown reduction on the a3 cooldown reduction and buff and debuff chance on the a2 and the a1 so it's definitely worth the books it's about 10 books i think it was um so if you want to use him definitely go ahead and book him his a3 ability places a shield which apparently has a very low multiplier i believe it's 2.5 and compared to a champion like valkyrie with a three it's pretty low also his base defense compared to valkyrie is pretty low but there's a few things that I think may make this not too bad. So places a shield and a 15% continuous heal, which is very nice. And then it's two passives, okay? This passive um, basically stops one ally from taking a single target hit, and he takes it instead. And the passive down here basically makes him an absolute wrecking ball, okay? This is very, very cool. But something about this passive, I got to show you guys, this is actually crazy. So we did an arena match on stream, and it actually gave me a crazy result. So hopefully this is muted. Um, we'll go ahead and mute this right here. So what I want you guys to see is how his passive works when you have a Mortu doing his stuff, okay? So what I assumed was going to happen is I assumed that Ultimate Death Knight would take all the damage and nothing else would be said of it. <laughs> well, that's a, absolutely not what happens. And basically, Ultimate Death Knight ma makes it to where if you're going to go against him, bring a Mortu, you guys will see, okay? So check this out. I use Mortu for my... More, um, I use Peril for my Mortu. Targeting Warlord. Okay, notice that. I'm clicking on Warlord. I kill Ultimate Death Knight because he redirects the hit. <laughs> and then I kill Warlord as well. So his passive absolutely destroys him. So being too awesome to die actually makes him kill himself as well as the original enemy. So this is like the complete opposite of being too awesome to die. This is literally... Not good at all versus Mortu. Now, against most other things, it's probably fine. But in this situation, absolutely terrible. Now, this ability right here, this actually is crazy. So initially, I was thinking, okay, if this increases the champion's HP, defense, and speed by 10% for each dead ally, based on his base speed, you're looking at what? Okay, so base base HP of 20,000, okay? 20,000 times 0.1 is just 2,000, okay? 2,000 times 4, you're looking at 8,000 total HP boosted. That's not too high. <laughs> but that's not how it works, okay? So that skill actually boosts the champion stats by his total stat when he when he walks into a battle, okay? I don't think it's like stacking on top of each other. I think it's just, just 61,000, and it always boosts off of this stat right there. Pretty sure. I haven't like actually data mined or tested that. I've tested it, but I haven't data mined it. What I did to test it was I was seeing the healing 
from immortal and regeneration and his continuous heal. And it all led to, hey, he has 40,000 more HP than he did earlier. So basically, if I have 60,000 HP going into a match, times that by 1.4, because we have four allies dying ideally, which is going to be a total of 40% increase, 84,000 HP. So your 60,000 HP ultimate death knight is now going to be 84,000 HP when everybody's dead. Now that's pretty crazy, but this is even crazier, okay? Say that same Death Knight had 200 speed, okay? 200 speed times 1.4 is going to be 280 speed. If you're a player, a new game player, early game player, getting 200 speed is pretty impressive, right? It's pretty good. If you can get that in dungeons, it's going to be very solid. But getting 280 speed on this champion, that's not going to happen, right? But when everybody dies on your team, Ultimate Death Knight is going to be 280 speed. Now, where does this actually matter? Well, let me show you. So stage 20, this isn't going to be an amazing comparison because obviously the gear that I have is going to be quite a bit further along in the game than most players. If you're watching this and you're looking for him to be like early and mid game, but 177 crit damage, basically good defense, good HP, good speed. And yeah, let's just see what he does. Accuracy. I probably need a little bit more accuracy, but honestly, I don't really care. Okay. I don't care if he places anything. Um, I say that and I'm going to equip an, a, a banner with some accuracy on it. So let's see how this goes. So he has a defense aura, which is also crazy because there's a graph a while back that basically shows the diminishing return of more defense on your champions. And basically about around 4,200 defense and PVE content is where you get the most damage reduction. Well, with ultimate death Knight, as long as you have, let's see what I wrote over here. As long as you have 2,574 defense, assuming all of your allies die, you're going to have 4,200 defense total at the end of that okay so basically what happens is say his base defense i forget what it is exactly but aura scale based on your base defense i think his base defense is like 1440 okay we'll just say that's what it is for the purpose of this video but times that by 0.3 that means he's going to get a base 432 defense added onto himself okay so if you have 2574 plus what i say 430 somewhere around there you're gonna get 3000 defense times about 1.4 after everybody dies, and you're going to have 4,205, give or take, defense, okay? That is a lot of defense. So you only need to build this guy with 2,574, assuming everybody else on your team dies. Now, not everybody's going to want to build him for solo content, but I think this guy, if you're mid-game, if you're doing, if you're working through progression stages of dungeons, Dragon, Ice Golem, Fire Knight, not so, not so much because you need a full team, Spider, his shield is going to be okay there, but nothing crazy. Honestly, Dragon and fire, um, Ice Golem, okay? Dragon and Ice Golem, this dude is going to be absolutely incredible in my opinion because even if your team dies, he's going to survive. Now, when Dragon, as far as Dragon is concerned, you need to make sure that you have somebody do poisons on the Dragon because if you're doing Dragon solo with this guy with no toxic gear, he's not going to kill it, okay? He's just not going to survive. But with toxic gear, with War Master, he's going to do perfectly fine. It's going to be a pretty slow run if you're wanting to do solo, but you can always do it. You can definitely bring two champions in here, bring some other food champions. It's going to work great. You can see that he was perfectly fine the entire time. Actually, on stream, I don't really want to have to go back and show you guys all that. But on stream, I did a solo Ice Golem run, and it was 16 minutes. Let me show you right here, okay? So we'll go ahead and uh, make that muted. Ice Golem right here. Ice Golem stage 24, okay? This was weak affinity for him. Let me get this out of the way while he's farming the background. But Ice Golem Stage 24, okay? Weak affinity. Most solo champions can't even solo the neutral affinity stage, okay? So if they're force affinity, they have to do magic affinity. But Death Knight had no problem. He was doing Ice Golem Stage 24, okay? We'll fast forward this 30 seconds. 30 seconds again. 30 seconds again. It takes a while, okay? We'll go back 10 seconds. Let's see. 24. 16 minutes and 40 seconds. Not going to happen, okay? Not realistic whatsoever but it works. So he's going to be a huge help as far as progressing you through Ice Golem, Dragon, just getting you to those stages 20, those stages 24, those stages 25, whatever your goal is in the game, getting you to that stage. Now, he does have a problem with running to the Dragon. His run to the Dragon is absolutely terrible. Look at that. What is this? What is going on there? His zigzag pathway up to the Dragon makes him take a lot longer. But as far as a progression champion, I think he's going to be fantastic. As far as doing good in... Faction Wars, I think he's going to be very solid as well. You can definitely build him with a stun set, taunting set, to actually provoke and control the enemy. Stun set because he has that A2 ability. That is an AoE hit. So definitely a bunch of different builds for Death Knight. Now, as far as PvP is concerned, 
I think there's a few different builds to try. I think I'm gonna go with Stone Skim, but I haven't really tested it very much. So, so far, my initial impressions for Death Knight are for early game, mid game account, he's gonna be solid. Let me jump in here to the um, actual campaign to see how he does, okay? Nightmare stage 12, six, okay? Just for some comparison. Um, assuming everybody dies, maybe he can do well. He, he is an absolutely tanky, very survivable champion, period. Assuming your allies die. Now, if your allies are not dying, he's not getting the benefits from that passive, but he still has a continuous heal, which is very nice. He has the AOE decrease attack, the provoke, all the stuff is very nice in his kit. Now, as far as a clan boss champion, we'll talk about this while we do this run, okay? So as far as a clan boss champion, he's gonna he's gonna do clan boss. He's gonna be helpful. He brings a decrease attack. He brings a continuous heal. He brings a shield. He brings beneficial things to the clan boss, but I don't really see him being like a new clan boss meta champion. So like Helicath, Valkyrie, those are clan boss meta champions. Those are very, very good clan boss champions. Him, I don't really see him becoming a clan boss top tier champion because his kit doesn't seem to bring enough. The continuous heal is nice, the shield's nice, decrease attack's nice, but it's really all more so focused around early and mid-game accounts, early and mid-game clan boss team. He will definitely make your clan boss do a lot more damage because you'll be able to survive a lot longer. The stun from the clan boss may actually be redirected to him, the damage from that. Uh, I'd be interested in finding that out. But a minute farming time, he can do it. But I mean, doing it and being worth it may be two different things. Completely up to you guys. Um, but let's go to the next area. So once we finish this, 3v3, I definitely think he's going to find some uses in the arena. Um, clan boss, potentially decent early game, mid game. Honestly, I think Ultimate Death Knight, in my opinion, like I said, take it with a grain of salt. I just want to get you guys a video out as soon as possible about this guy. But early mid-game champion, maybe even later in the game for some Doom Tower areas if you want. It's going to be slow. It's, he's not going to be part of any speedruns, I can't imagine. I don't see any situation where Ultimate Death Knight is speedrunning a dungeon. He could duo and make it a pretty, re pretty reasonable time, but he's not going to be speedrunning, okay? Um, the arena, I think he could possibly fit in there. I think we may be seeing people actually trying him out in the arena and seeing some use from him. Um, I tried him out a little bit, still got a lot of work to actually do. I need some more silver to actually change up the stuff. But so far, early mid-game champion, very solid. The later game, I think he's definitely going to fall off. I don't see a lot of people using him very far into the game. But it's very, very early to tell. So let's go ahead and give him a rating. I don't do very many ratings on champions. <laughs> I thought this was a rating button. Obviously, I don't do very many ratings on champions. So that is not the rating button. So campaign locations, I'm going to say four. He survives, but it's not great. Five would be great. Arena offense, honestly... Um, oh my gosh, this, oh guys, this is going to be so bad. So ultimate death knight is going to be the ultimate troll. So what I showed you with his survivability, imagine this. Okay. Imagine you're a newer player. Okay. Your day 14 in your account. You've been having fun. You've been having a great time. You've been even going through the arena. Arena is in a good spot. All of a sudden you come across an ultimate death knight. The ultimate death knight has a bunch of useless champions beside him and you kill all those useless champions. Now that Ultimate Death Knight, where 200 speed is like your fastest champion, that Ultimate Death Knight now has 280 speed. Doing a continuous heal, he's going to be doing decreased attack. He's going to absolutely destroy you, and you're never going to kill him. So I think Ultimate Death Knight will become the biggest troll champion in lower levels arena. Now, Ramen 2 easily counters him, but I could definitely see him becoming an absolute troll champion. So arena offense, I don't see him being amazing. Maybe like a, a budget Nah, not really. I'd say budget Necrit, but no, maybe against Rodos. So I'd say three. I don't really see anything amazing. Now, arena defense, if you're early game, five. If you're mid game, maybe even a five or four. Um, but late game, I'm going to say four. Uh, we really haven't seen a whole lot from him. Void keep, I don't care about this. We'll just say three on all this. He could be great on void keep. I mean, w w he's, he's going to survive. He's going to survive and get through it. Um, maybe even I just don't rate this. It's probably the best idea. So I already rated it. It is what it is. Ice Golden Peak, I'd say not really a five because he's not speeding anything up. Maybe a four because he can help you progress through that stuff. Um, Let's go to Fire Knight. Maybe a two. Not really bringing anything good there at all. Keeping your team alive, that's about it. Dragon's Lair, four, I'd say. Same as Ice Golem. Um, Minotaur, doesn't really matter. Kind of irrelevant. Spider's Den, he's going to be like a three. Kind of just mediocre. Clan boss, he's going to be good for early game. So uh, I'd say, honestly, three. He's good. He's going to help some people, but not going to be a crazy good champion. Hydra, maybe he has some uses in Hydra, possibly. AoE decrease attack, it's going to be good. So Hydra, he might actually be a four, going on a five, possibly. Regeneration, or 
uh, continuous heal plus the shield set. So we'll go ahead and lock those in. I don't think he's gonna be crazy, but he's a pretty good, pretty daggone good free champion. So guys, good luck if you build Ultimate Death Knight. Let me know your new, innovative, and creative builds for Ultimate Death Knight. It's gonna be a lot longer that needs to be testing him for me to actually know how to use him to my best of my ability. With that said, I want to get this out to you as quickly as possible. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you all in the next video.